In this video, we're going to be looking at how we can set up a feasibility analysis within Altair Inspireform. Uh, Inspireform is a complete stamping simulation tool that allows engineers to simulate the stamping slash forming process, which will help to identify defects before manufacture, which will hopefully lead to reduced costs and better products. In the feasibility stage within uh, Inspireform, we start with the finished part, the 3D part, and we work in reverse to get to the flat blank. At this stage, we can do a quick and reliable check on the formability of the part early in the product design stage. We're able to predict splits, wrinkles, and loose metal. At this stage, we can also extract the flat blank and nest to predict the best layout for material utilization. So um, the first step is to import our, our CAD model. We can import the CAD model from a number of different formats, uh, which we can see here. I'm gonna import a, um, a parasolid. Once this has been imported, we can start the process. So in this feasibility tab, we always work left to right. Um, so the first step is to actually extract a mid surface. At the moment, this is a, a, a 3D model. It's got a, a thickness. Um, I think the thickness is one mil. And uh, so the first step is to extract the mid surface. So we do this by using our extracts mid surface tool, clicking on the part. And as long as the parts are uniform thickness, we'll be able to extract the, um, the mid surface. If your part isn't uniform strip, uh, thickness, you can also extract the outer or inner, inner surface to use. So I'm now gonna hit the tick box and that will extract my surface. Once this is completed, we'll move on to the defeature stage. So if you've got any geometry that you wish to defeature, um, such as holes, and other things we can use our D feature tool to quickly clean up a model ready for the simulation. So I'm gonna use the hole tool. I'm also gonna use the cutout tool to remove these areas. So we can see here, we can remove these cutouts very easily just using this tool here. So my part has now been D featured. Uh, the next step is to go on to materials. So we can click our materials tool and we have a number of um, steels and aluminiums. Um, in each of these, we can see the material properties to the uh, right hand side. So we can see the elastic properties, the plastic properties. We can see our stress strain curve um, and um, other, other properties. So in this uh, model, I'm going to assign a, um, a maybe T6 aluminium material to this. Um, just to make sure that material is being used, I can right click on the part and just make sure it's ticked here. Um, if you import a surface, you can also obviously specify the thickness. Obviously, this thickness has been taken off my 3D model. But if you import a surface, you can also specify a, a thickness if you're looking to investigate um, different um, uh, thickness parts. Um, so once we've set up our materials, we can orientate the parts. So what the software does is it tries to predict the, the best orientation based on the, um, the part. Um, in some instances, this might not be the, the orientation you want. So you can always use axes or you can actually orientate the part yourself. If I use the Z axis, we can see that we're getting some colors on our part. What this is showing is a negative draft angle. So um, up in the left hand corner, we can see that we've got a, um, a negative draft angle of um, zero to 10, which is highlighting as um, yellow that is com considered passable but it may not be to you um, and then we've also got a um, the red which is obviously considered a failure um, it, it won't won't be able to form um, to between 10 and obviously the max in this part of that that z-axis is um, 79.6 so I'm going to actually specify the y-axis and uh, just right click to confirm that so at the next stage, we can then specify if the part is being constrained in any way. We can add a um, pins, blank holders, and draw beads. Um, I'm not going to specify any constraints in this instance. I'm going to just, just presume that this is going to be a crash form part, but obviously we can add constraints. Um, so I'm going to skip that stage and then I'm going to go straight into the analyze stage. So here we can click this tool here. We've got our run options. Obviously, I haven't got any constraints, so I'm going to specify crash form. Um, and then we can choose our mesh size where we can use the, the presets, coarse, medium or fine, 
or you can actually use um, your custom. So I'm just going to go medium for the purpose of this. Uh, we can specify our friction coefficient. And if we do want to simulate um, spring back, we can also do that as well. So I'm going to click the run tool. And this will now go into the first stage, which is turning this part into a mesh. So the first stage is to convert the 3D, 3D model into a mesh. And then it will go into the operation of crash, crash forming and uh, we'll get our results. This stage is very rapid. Normally you get results within seconds, um, which we can see now. We've instantly got results, which we can straight away load. So to load the results, we can click on this little green flag or show analysis results. So we can start to see our results. Our results or Anal analysis explorer is here on the right hand side. Um, at the moment, we are looking at thinning and we can use our animation bar down here to actually animate the results. I like to slow down my animation speed just to get an idea of how this part is forming. So if I just pause the results, we're looking at thinning. Other results that we can look at in this stage are thinning, thickness, uh, stress strain, um, displacement and force required. So um, one thing you may be interested in is actually the formability of the parts. If we click this tool here, we can see the formability of the part. And if you look to the right hand side, you can see your, your color map. So we can see the green areas are safe. We are actually getting some failures, which are these red areas. And um, we're getting obviously some wrinkles, loose metal. So based on my settings, we are we obviously, this isn't probably going to be um, brilliant. Again, you might want to try a different forming method where we can strain it and don't do a crash form. Um, at this stage, we can put it, we can do use the, the call outs tool. We can show the, the thickened state. We can um, show or hide contours, so we can snap to the deformed state, the flat blank, or the three D part. Um, and obviously, again, as I say, use callouts to to very easily put callouts in different areas, and we can start to see different things at different stages. So um, that's the. Um, feasibility stage. What we'll move into now is the um, blank layouts and just quickly show you a report that can be generated. Once we have analysed our, our results, we can, if we wish, create a report. So to create a report, you click this tool here. You basically choose what sort of results you wish to see in the report. Click the publish tool and this will um, create a, a PowerPoint. So the PowerPoint will look something like this. Um, I didn't orientate model brilliantly uh, when before I created the report so um, this is what I was saying this um, but this will create your report um, in a PowerPoint which you can customize to have your own company logo and everything it is just a, a default template um, and your report will look something like this which obviously you can modify because it's a PowerPoint file also you can create your blank layout so if we click here we can run a, a blank fit layout. We can choose the sorts of shapes that we're looking to, um, to fit to. And we can choose our material cost, uh, add an addendum as well if we wish. And that will um, create a blank layout. This will create a HTML report, which will look something like this. So we've got a, a blank fit summary where we can start to look at the material utilization. If I click on the report for that, we can start to see the material utilization for a rectangle. Um, if we Look here, we can obviously see we're utilizing a lot more, lot better material using the regular trapezoid shape. We can click on the report for that and we can see the, the shape and all our other information here. If we want to do a blank nesting, uh, if we go back into the software, again, we click this tool here. Um, again, similar, similar settings here where we can actually choose stock, uh, where we can choose a coil or sheet. Um, we can choose which type of transfer. We can choose the shape we can choose our pattern. Um, so a number of other settings here. Again, that would create your HTML report, which will look something like this. Again, we can start to look at the material utilization. We can see here, open a report, and we can see our nesting shape as well. 
So um, that's what we can do in the feasibility stage of Altair in form. If you do have any questions, feel free to leave a, a comment on the video or, or get in touch.